Hi, my name is Ben Trelant, and today we're going to be looking at correlation length and the KT transition in the 2D XY model. This is a project for my Physics 379 course taught by Dr. Amy Cullen at St. Olive College. Like the icing model, the XY model is a lattice spin model. However, in the XY model, spins can orient themselves in any direction within the plane from 0 to 2 pi. The expression for the Hamiltonian is displayed. Here, J is the interaction energy between spins, and SI represents the configuration of a given spin. Because spins are oriented in a plane, the dot product in the first expression can be rewritten involving a cosine of the difference between the thetas for each spin where theta is measured relative to the x-axis. One of the programs I've written for this project is a vPython visualization of the XY model using the Metropolis algorithm with periodic boundary conditions for relatively small lattices, in this case a 16 by 16 lattice. One of the more interesting features of the XY model is the existence and behavior of vortices, which are a topological spin configuration. When tracing out a closed loop path around a vortice, the spins along the path will make a rotation of plus or minus 2 pi times an integer. This is part of the definition of a vortice. Vortices in which the spins rotate the same direction as the path are called positive vortices, as seen here. Vortices in which the spins rotate in the opposite direction of the path are called negative vortices, as seen here. This is true regardless of the direction of path. You can pause the video and check for yourself. In the XY model, positive and negative vortices always occur in pairs. In this visualization, the shade of yellow of each spin square background is proportional to the Hamiltonian of that particular site calculated with nearest neighbors. White is low energy, meaning generally aligned with neighbors, while yellow is high energy, generally less aligned with neighbors. Vortices, as seen in the current image, are high energy configurations and can be identified by regions with more yellow backgrounds. In a few moments, I will run the configuration. It will begin at low temperature with no vortices present. I will then briefly increase the temperature by a large amount and the thermal fluctuations will allow for the creation and existence of vortices, such that vortices always exist. It can be hard to see individual vortices at this high temperature. I will then lower the temperature and all of the vortices that remain will clearly exist in positive and negative pairs. At this lower temperature, no new vortices can form. Additionally, the vortice pairs that exist will attract and eventually annihilate, leading to a low temperature state with zero vortices, similar to where the simulation began. In the high temperature state, vortices are unbound and do not attract. This transition between a lower temperature state with no vortices and a high temperature state with vortices is known as the kosterlitz thaulis transition, or the KT transition. kosterlitz thaulis as well as Haldane, won the Nobel Prize in 2016 for discoveries of topological phase transitions and topological phases of matter. The discovery of the KT transition in the 2D XY model was significant in that it was a new type of phase transition, a topological phase transition, that was different from the spontaneous symmetry breaking phase transitions that Merman and Wagner showed to be impossible in a lattice model of dimension 2 or less in finite temperatures. In the XY model, the Hemholtz free energy is given by the displayed expression. In low temperatures, the energetic term in the Hemholtz free energy dominates, whereas in high temperatures, the entropic term dominates and vortices are created in order to lower the free energy. The KT transition occurs at the transition between an energetically dominating free energy and an entropically dominating free energy, and this part of the expression is zero. The creation of vortices is the topological defect that allows for a phase transition instead of spontaneous symmetry breaking. In addition to the vPython visualization, I also programmed a MATLAB simulation of the XY model using the Metropolis algorithm and periodic boundary conditions. This new simulation was built for analyzing larger lattice sizes and carrying out additional computations that I'll touch more on later. For the system, I chose parameters such that TKT was equal to 1. For a 50 by 50 lattice, I used the MATLAB program to calculate the magnetization and vorticity as a function of temperature. The plot shows that magnetization of the system drops off sharply at T, KT, 
and that vorticity is effectively zero for temperatures below TKT and non-zero for temperatures above. The fluctuations seen are due to not having enough time to average the results over many trials as well as finite lattice size. The existence of a few vortices below TKT is due to the step down of temperatures in the simulation from high to low temperatures resulting in the existence of some vortices at low temperatures that eventually annihilated similar to the vPython code. The KT transition the occurs when the free energy is equal to similar zero, in many ways which to occurs when both pi to spin j models and the interaction of similar behavior is equal to qualities. 2 times the For example, Boltzmann constant in each system both the temperature susceptibility and specific heat diverge when approaching the critical point. For more in-depth analysis of this behavior in the XY model, see my classmate Will Gustafsson's video. Despite similarities, the XY model and Ising model are in different universality classes, meaning they have different critical exponents that govern their behaviors. One of the most interesting features of the XY model's universality class is behavior related to its correlation function and correlation length not seen in the Ising model. In the XY model, the correlation function is the displayed expression. This is essentially how aligned spins are at a given separation between lattice sites. In the MATLAB program, calculating correlation function at a given temperature requires sampling a site, finding the average correlation of all lattice sites at each possible distance away while accounting for periodic boundary conditions, and repeating this for each lattice site. For temperatures above TKT, the correlation function goes as a decaying exponential. X is the distance between lattice sites, and psi is the correlation length. For temperatures below TKT, the correlation function is a power law. The transition between the two occurs at TKT. This transition can be seen by plotting the correlation functions for a range of temperatures around TKT, as well as their fits for each function, and seeing where the data transitions from one fit to another. I will show this in a few moments with my MATLAB program. The transition can also be seen by using log-log and semi-log plots, and seeing the temperature range where the correlation function falls into a linear function in each plot. This method requires averaging over multiple iterations and adjusting points on the calculated correlation functions that are less than or are equal to zero. Displayed now are plots of the correlation function for given temperatures. Stepping through plots with different temperatures, we can see the transition from exponential to power law.